let me start off. Why is this not your boss's forecast per our subtitle? Um, you know, if you have a forecast that was built for the thermal dispatch world, it may not capture the key dynamics that are relevant for the energy transition, right? So um, volatility at both the day ahead and real time level uh, show up a lot more when you have intermittent supply. Uh, cost of land is a critical driver when you have projects that take up a large footprint, uh, much larger than you do with a typical thermal plant. Uh, curtailment and negative prices show up a lot more often when you have, uh, you know, kind of must take surplus generation conditions, which you get with renewables uh, on the system. Uh, we see, uh, you know, the impacts of uncertainty on renewable output, uh, how, how to maintain reliability with thermal generation at, at you know, min-gen levels, uh, potential for out-of-merit dispatch in order for to maintain reliability. Uh, you know, these are a lot of dynamics that, that uh, really matter in an energy transition world. And, uh, you know, if you have a really great forecast for typewriter sales and products, uh, that may not be so relevant anymore. And so, you know, we have to understand how, how the, um, the changing supply is going to alter the market dynamics, and we need to make sure that our forecasts are aligned to how those um, markets are shifting. As we look at kind of the future of supply stacks, we have to go beyond just economic factors because there are non-economic driving forces uh, that are really critical to understand. Um, from an ESG standpoint, uh, you know, we see more and more companies that are pursuing net zero targets, net zero goals, contracting as off takers for renewable energy contracts. Uh, you know, do we think that's going to stop or do we think that's going to accelerate? Not, our view at Ascend is that that's going to accelerate. When we look at retirements too, we also have to look at, um, uh, you know, do we, do we, do we think that, that new announcements of retirements are going to stop? And what we've seen is, is, you know, every couple of months, it seems like there's a new announcement about, you know, earlier retirements or, or moving up retirement dates, particularly for coal. Um, so, you know, the forecast that only looks at announced retirements is missing the fact that we know because we've seen this over and over again, uh, that more announcements get made all the time. And so we have to, we have to think about the expectation of uh, what, what are the next announcements that are coming. Um, you know, as we look at coal in particular, uh, if you have renewables coming in, eating into capacity factors, and so now you have coal operating at lower capacity factors with high fixed costs, those high fixed costs are getting distributed over fewer and fewer megawatt hours. It becomes harder and harder to stay profitable. Um, as you have renewables coming in, you also end up with surplus capacity, which means you get fewer scarcity conditions on the grid, which again makes it harder for, for coal in particular. And so we think that, that coal is going to see a, a, an incredible tidal wave of retirements through the 2020s. And, and they haven't been announced yet, but they will be you know, in the coming years. So key takeaways uh, from a supply stack standpoint, as we think about you know, what's the future of the supply capacity expansion models, um, renewables are increasingly lowest cost form, uh, which means that most new resources are going to be renewables and storage. And even, even with inflation and high gas prices, all those do is make renewables look even better. And so that's just going to drive more renewables to come in. Um, but economics aren't the only driving force. Uh, we have to consider how policy is going to evolve. We have to consider off-taker demand. Uh, we have to consider stakeholder pressure on decarbonization strategies. And at the same time, uh, as you get more renewables in, thermal capacity by definition will have to see declining capacity factors. Those declining capacity factors are going to have concentrated impacts on high fixed cost resources. All four of these are impacted by renewables. Congestion because renewables lead to oversupply conditions. Scarcity uh, because uh, renewables can drive out thermal generation, which can tighten reserve margins. Uh, forecast error uh, because renewables are harder to predict than a thermal plant usually, uh, and net load ramps because solar, the sun sets and the wind ramps. Um, and so all of those uh, are increased with renewable penetrations. And if we look at the impact of gas and carbon prices, gas and carbon prices amplify every one of them. Um, so you know if you're going from oversupply to undersupply, uh, gas and carbon prices don't affect your zeros, but they do affect uh, your high prices, and so you get a bigger spread. Um, same is true kind of for all of these. So higher gas, higher carbon pull, pushes your highs higher and pushes your spreads wider. You know, after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, there was kind of a, a general expectation in the gas markets that there would be ongoing increases in LNG, right? So increased LNG export capacity from the U.S., increased in LNG import demand in Europe, uh, which uh, means that, that uh, our market would be increasingly coupled to the European market. Um, not totally coupled, by the way, you know, gas prices in Europe, well, we're at eight or like 30, right? So, you know, they're, they're still significantly higher. 
um, but we're feeling a little bit more of that European price. And we're, we're you know, as we export more, we dip deeper into our supply uh, and into higher cost portion of our supply. And so, you know, that's where that permanent structural uplift comes from. Um, you know, I think a lot of people expect this to be the saving grace for coal because uh, as gas gets more expensive, coal looks better. Um, but the problem is that as gas gets more expensive, power prices go up and as power prices go up, renewables look even better. And so that just becomes a, a, a even more of a driving force for renewables. At the same time, uh, you know, gas prices really amplify volatility. Um, so if you have a heat, a heat rate spread and you multiply that by a gas price, the power price spread gets bigger. The bigger the gas price, the bigger the, the power price spread. And if you have, say, storage that makes its money off of that spread, um, that means that you're uh, increasing the, the market opportunity for storage as well. 